This is R2D Tech and we're back again with another video today, this time about the Pixel 4a, so stay tuned. So the budget area of the smartphone market has become a lot more crowded in recent times with the addition of the new iPhone SE as well as the OnePlus Nord. So the 4A has a lot of competition and we're going to see if it can compete with those other phones. So the theme of the Pixel 4a is kind of that Google have simplified everything and you'll see this all throughout this video. So firstly, let's talk about the design. And Google, like on the Pixel 3a from last year, they've stuck with a plastic outer casing and a glass screen. However, like on the Pixel 4, they have removed the two-tone finish, uh, which I didn't really care for too much, to be honest. Since it is a plastic outer casing, I would highly recommend getting a skin or a case because it definitely will scratch pretty easily. So that's something to take into account as well. Strangely, Google decided not to have two sizes this year. There's no Pixel 4a XL. Um, so there's just the smaller option. And what's even more strange is there is only one color option, which is black with the green accent on the power button. That seems pretty strange to me, considering that Google usually has some of the most colorful phones out there. So if you do want a colorful phone, you should probably look elsewhere or put a skin on it. So that display is actually a 5.8 inch OLED panel, and it is a flat display with a resolution of 1080p, which is pretty standard on a lot of budget phones out there. Unfortunately, it is only a 60 hertz panel, unlike what we got on the Pixel 4, which was a 90 hertz panel. So that is one of the drawbacks of this phone. We saw on the OnePlus Nord, you do also get a 90 hertz panel. So if you do want a fast refresh rate, then definitely go for that one. So let's move on to the specs of this phone. And this is probably one of the weakest areas. So for a processor, you're gonna be getting the mid-range Snapdragon 730G processor. Uh, for RAM, you're getting six gigabytes of RAM and storage 128 gigs. Unfortunately, those are the only options for RAM and storage. In the past, we've seen that Google doesn't really offer very many options uh, to choose from. Battery capacity is 3,140 milliamp hours, which I'd say is actually pretty good for a budget phone of this size. That should get you a pretty great battery lag considering that it is a 60 hertz 1080p panel. Let's move on to the cameras and this is probably the strongest area of this phone. So on the rear you're getting a 12.2 megapixel camera and on the front for the selfie camera in a hole punch actually on the left you are getting an 8 megapixel camera. Those specs don't sound amazing on paper however it's more to do with the software that Google is using and the Pixel 4a yields some really incredible photos, pretty much as good as the Pixel 4 and the iPhone 11 Pro. For a budget phone, that is really good because budget phones have always really struggled with camera quality and we saw that on the OnePlus Nord and iPhone SE. Uh, they weren't as good as their flagship counterparts. So if you are looking for a phone with a really great camera and you don't want to pay too much, then you should probably look at the Pixel 4a. So now looking around the phone, you'll see that you do get a USB-C charging, which supports 18 watts fast charging, which isn't too great, but considering that it is a budget phone, we can kind of let that slide. There is also a headphone jack included, which is really good. Thankfully, Google has have kept that this year on their budget phones, and hopefully that will continue in the future. For security, you are getting a fingerprint reader on the back, which is really fast and responsive. That's where we saw it on the Pixel 3a as well, so that's not really changed. Google have dropped their fancy sensors from the Pixel 4, 
So there's no support for facial recognition and there are no more hand gestures which you can do above the phone. I don't think anyone's complaining that those are gone. Another great thing about the Pixel line is the software support and this phone will be running stock Android 10 which is in my opinion the best version of Android out there. What's also great is that you are guaranteed three years of software updates from Google, which isn't quite as good as Apple, which offer around five years for their phones. However, three years is still kind of acceptable. You will also be getting the new Google Assistant with the Pixel 4a, which is another bonus if you like using digital assistants. So as I said before, Google have pretty much simplified everything from their previous phones. There's only one size, one color, one option for RAM and storage, and they've removed their sensors from the Pixel 4, which were quite controversial. What we're left with is a pretty solid phone, to be honest, and at £350, I think it's a really great option. There is fierce competition from Apple and OnePlus with their iPhone SE and OnePlus Nord, which are both really great phones in their own right. So it really depends on what you're looking for. I'd say if you want specs, then go for the iPhone SE. If you want uh, the best all-round phone, then you should probably look at the OnePlus Nord but if you want the phone with the best camera for this price, then you should definitely look at the Pixel 4a. That's it from this video. If you liked it, please press the thumbs up button. If you loved it, please consider subscribing.